Hey, what's up, guys? This is Neil with Neil Reyes Ministries, and I want to welcome you to today's episode of Champions Walk. Today is part five in our Guarding Your Soul Gate series, and today we're going to be covering the mouth gate. Again, we've already covered the eye gate, the ear gate, and now we're covering the mouth gate. Again, today's teaching that we're covering is Guarding Your Soul Gates, and today is part five. I want to open up in prayer, and then we're going to jump right into the Word. Father God, I come before you, Lord, and in the name of Jesus, thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak. Lord, I thank you that as I speak today, that as I teach, the words that flow out of my mouth are all of you, Lord, and none of me. Lord, I thank you that they will bring comfort to the people who are listening. And as I speak, Lord, you are ministering to them right where they're at. You're building them up, you're lifting them up, and you're helping them in their daily life. Lord, I thank you that these words have impact within their life and that they grow them and encourage them in the areas that they need to. Lord, we lift this up to you and thank you as always. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, praise God. I'm glad that you stopped by to join us as we continue in our series of Guarding Your Soul Gates. Today is part five. Just a little bit of recap about our previous teachings. We've discussed that there are three gates to your soul. You have your eye gate, you have your ear gate, and you have your mouth gate. Now to back that up, I want to go right into the scripture. And today's scripture that we're going to be covering is our foundational scripture that we've been using for the series. It's out of 1 Thessalonians 5.23. So out of 1 Thessalonians 5.23, and today I'm going to read it to you out of the New King James, it says this. It says, Now may the God of peace Himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now the reason why we've had this as our foundational scripture is because it's, under, it's important for you to understand that as an individual, you are a three-part being. Now, I didn't say as a believer you're a three-part being. I said as an individual. In other words, as a person, as a human being, as a creation of God, you were created as a three-part being. You are a spirit that has a soul that lives in the body. This scripture right here is a defining scripture for us that illustrates that. You are a spirit that has a soul and lives in a body. And that's God's spiritual order for that as well. In fact, if we were teaching on alignment, we would teach you to say, body, line up to soul. Soul, line up to spirit. And spirit, line up to the spirit and word of God. That's the proper alignment for an individual within the kingdom of Christ. Now, as we teach about this, it's, you are a spirit that has a soul that lives in a body. But your soul is also comprised of three things. It is your mind, it's your will, and your emotions. Your mind is what you think with, your will is what you choose with, and your emotions are what you feel with. So your feeler, thinker, chooser, your mind, your will, and your emotions. Now, as we've been going through this series, we've covered that there are three gates to every person's soul. You have your eye gate, which is your gate in which you perceive things, in which you see images and view things that enter into your soul. You then have your ear gate, which is how you hear. And then you have your mouth gate. Now, we've already done extensive teachings on the eye gate and ear gate, and today we're touching down on the mouth gate. Now, the reason why it's so important that we watch these is because you have to understand that as an individual, as a believer in Christ, these three gates are how you guard the noise that enters your soul. Other ways of looking at it would be guarding your heart. These are ways in how you guard your heart. The noise that penetrates through these three gates will penetrate your soul. And if you're not guarded over what you're allowing to enter your soul, that noise can drown out the voice of God. I'm going to say that again. When you allow noise into your soul through these three gates, when you don't learn to filter out the junk, the noise that comes in through these three gates can begin to drown out the voice of God within your life. You know, I will tell you that in all my years in ministry, even before I officially began in ministry, when I would do Bible studies and speak to people and be involved in serving at churches and all kinds of things, it seems like the number one thing I've encountered over time is people saying, how do I hear the voice of God? 
or how do I hear Him better? Sometimes you'll even hear people say that, I don't hear the voice of God, or I can't hear the voice of God. Sometimes people think that God's not speaking, or God's not speaking to me. I remember years ago, the Lord had me ministering in a class, and when I was teaching this class, I was talking about, and it's often that I'll talk about, you know, God was explaining this to me the other day, or I was fellowshipping with God, and He said this. Sometimes that makes people uncomfortable, and I'm not saying that to boast myself in any way. That's just how I fellowship with Him. I talk with Him often, and when I'm fellowshipping with Him, He's speaking to me. Now, He doesn't necessarily speak to me in an audible voice. Oftentimes, He's speaking to me through His Word when I'm reading the Word. Oftentimes, it's when I'm listening to teachings from other ministers, sometimes even my own teachings because you can get fed off your own stuff. When I'm going back and listening to the things we're teaching, sometimes that feeds me. But when I'm listening to other teachers, you know, there's things that speak to me. In my private fellowship time and just my time with Him as I'm, as I'm speaking with Him, like you'd be speaking to a friend, the Lord will speak to you. And as He does, He builds us up. But sometimes you'll have people say, well, I don't hear God like you do, so I don't think I'm doing it right. And you have to understand, and I'm going to back this statement up, but you and no one else will ever hear the voice of God like I do. But here's what I'm going to clarify. Hold up. I'm not saying you can't hear the voice of God as well as I do. I'm not saying you can't hear God speak like I do. What I'm saying is you'll never hear God speak the way I do because God speaks to each of us based around our individual personalities. I'm going to say that again. When God's speaking to you within your life, if you're comparing the voice of God within your life to the voice of God within someone else's life, the reason why those don't meet up is not because God doesn't desire to speak to you. It's because when God speaks to every person, He speaks to them based around their own personality. And as we grow in life and develop our character, especially in Him, each of our personalities are different. Now, there may be people you know who have personalities that complement yours or people you become close friends because it seems like you guys have identical personalities, but you have to understand that when God speaks to someone, it's He speaks to them based around their uniqueness, meaning the way He created them. He created them unique. And there's no one else on this world that is like you. You are a unique individual. And when He spoke your name into being, when He created you into being and spoke you into being, he created you with a unique personality. So when you learn to develop hearing the voice of God within your life, He'll always speak to you based around that personality. So when we turn around and talk about guarding your soul gates, when you guard the things you watch, guarding your eye gate, when you guard what you listen to, what you're hearing, guarding your ear gate, and when you guard what you speak, guarding your mouth gate, you are learning to guard your heart. And the more you guard your heart, the louder the voice of God will begin to appear within your life. Now I want to take you to another set of scripture that we're covering. And this is out of Proverbs 4.23. I'm going to read it to you out of the New King James. And then I'm also going to read it to you out of the Passion Translation. So Proverbs 4.23 says this, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Now, out of the Passion Translation, it says this, So above all, guard the affections of your heart, for they affect all that you are. Pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being, for from there flows the wellspring of life. Man, I tell you what, I really like the way the Passion Translation says that. I'm going to read it again. So above all, guard the affections of your heart, for they affect all that you are. Pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being, for from there flows the wellspring of life. As we talk about guarding your mouth gate, you know, we're going to break down some very specific things. We've already talked about guarding your eye gate. We've talked about guarding your ear gate. Now we're talking about guarding your mouth gate. But you have to understand that sometimes these gates are kind of tied to each other or they kind of blend or overlap. We have to be careful as man or as mankind about turning around and getting the things of God and trying to compartmentalize them within little boxes. You know, oftentimes when I'm teaching on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that's one of the things I'll teach. 
People tend to want to put the gifts of the Holy Spirit, specifically if I were talking about the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit found in Corinthians, they'll want to turn around and place a one gift in each of the boxes. And they think that when a gift is operating, that they'll pull that one box out, open the lid, and that's the one gift that's operating. However, oftentimes when people are operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit or the things of the Spirit, there's multiple things operating and supporting at the same time. Now, I say that principle to teach this. When you're talking about guarding your soul gates, you have to understand that yes, while there are things that can only impact your eye or only impact your ear or your mouth, in many cases, they kind of can also blend or overlap. And as we're talking about guarding your mouth gate, I want to also understand the mouth-ear combination. So we're going to say that again. Today we're teaching a little bit on the mouth-ear combination. Here's what I mean by that. No matter who you are, if you have the ability to hear and you have the ability to speak, no one who has the ability to both speak and hear can ever say a word out loud without their inner ear hearing what their mouth has to say. I'm going to say that again. If you speak something out of your mouth, even if you speak it very softly, your inner ear has the ability to hear what you just said. Now, here's why that's significant. Every person has two sets of ears. <laughs> I know that sounds funny, but maybe I shouldn't say two sets of ears, but two sets of hearing. You have your inner ear and you have your outer ear. Now, for people who are getting legalistic on me, just pay attention for a minute. <laughs> you have your inner ear, which is how you hear your voice when you speak. But you also have your outer ear, which is how you hear others speaking. That outer ear is also how others hear you speaking. That's why people who hear their voice for the first time will sometimes say, Wow, that's what I sound like? Because in their inner ear, their voice sounds one way, but in their outer ear, it sounds another. Now, here's why I touched down on that principle. No matter who you are, if you have the ability of speaking, and you have the ability of listening, hearing, then you, there is no voice that you can talk in low enough that your inner ear cannot hear what your mouth has to say. Here's why this is so important. This is your mouth-ear combination. When you speak out of your mouth and your inner ear hears what your mouth has to say, it will sow a seed inside your heart. And the Word tells us, which we're going to touch a little bit later, that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. And when you speak that Word again, and your inner ear hears it, you water the seed. And when you speak, you water. And when you speak, you water. To where you get caught in this vicious cycle of speaking, hearing, speaking, hearing, speaking, hearing, speaking, hearing. And when you're speaking things that don't line up with God's Word, when you're speaking things that don't line up with His will for your life and for the person who says, I'm trying to learn the will of God for my life, I don't know it, all you've got to do is jump in the Bible because the Bible outlines God's will for your life. And if what you're speaking does not line up with what His Word has to say for your life, then you're selling yourself short and you've got to be guarded over the things you're putting in your soul. You know, remember we talked about in our previous teaching when we spoke about the ear gate that it's possible that if you're not guarding your ears that you can contaminate your faith. But contaminating your faith just doesn't have to come from external sources you hear. It can also be by the things you're speaking out of your own mouth. I want to also verify, or not verify, but touch down on you that when a person daydreams, and, and, and what here's what I mean by daydreaming. If you're going through a situation where someone's made you mad at work, or if you're thinking of a family member, maybe for you it's the mother-in-law, or maybe it's even your spouse or whoever it is, if in your mind you play through a scenario where you are thinking about how you're going to tell them what for, <laughs> or you're going to tell them a little piece of your mind, You've got to be so guarded out over allowing the enemy to give you those thoughts and for you to act on them. Because even if you don't go do it, when a person thinks out those thoughts within their mind, if you stop and look, you'll realize that even though words may not be coming audibly out of your mouth, the words in your thoughts in your mind are so loud 
that your tongue will be wagging just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. And in the Word it tells us that the tongue can be like a, a little bit of fire that can burn down a whole lot. We've got to be guarded over our tongue. And you've got to be guarded over those thoughts that you allow to occupy your mind. So as we talk about that, I want to take you to Matthew 15, 11 through 20. And I'm going to read this to you out of the ESV, which is the English Standard Version, Matthew 15, 11 through 20. Let's read. It's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth. This defiles a person. Then the disciples came and said to him, now they're talking to Jesus, do you, know what the, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted or rooted up. Let them alone. They are blind guides, and if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain the parable to us. And he said to them, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth passes into the stomach and is expelled? But what comes out of the mouth pro proceeds from the heart, and this defiles a person. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile anybody. And Jesus was teaching and explaining to them that it's out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speak. And the religious folk of that day, the Pharisees, didn't like what he had to say. They turned around and thought that he was talking blasphemous or was teaching things that didn't line up with God's word. But Jesus, when the disciples, when Peter presses him and asks him, can you explain to us what this parable means? And Jesus had to explain to him exactly how it meant. He said that it's not what goes in the mouth that defiles a person. For when someone has something that goes in the mouth, whether that be drink or whether that be eat, that it goes into the stomach and then is expelled from the body. But it's what comes out of the mouth that defiles someone. Because when a person speaks, they're speaking out of what is in abundance within their heart. So let's read that again. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth. This defiles a person. Then the disciples came to him and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be rooted up. Let them alone. They are blind guides. And if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain the parable to us. And he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth passes into the stomach and is expelled? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this defiles a person. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile anyone. Jesus said that out of the heart come evil thoughts. This is an illustration of why we have to learn to guard our hearts. I read to you earlier in Proverbs 4.23 and have been covering it throughout this series that we've got to guard our hearts with diligence because out of it can flow the issues of life, that we have to guard our hearts. And to guard your heart, you have to guard your soul gates. You have to guard what's going in your eye. You have to guard what's going in your ear. And you have to guard what is coming out of your mouth. I want to take you to another scripture, and this is out of Luke 6.45. And this is what I was talking about earlier when Jesus talked about out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So Luke 6.45, and I'm going to read this to you out of the New King James. It says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. I'm going to tell you that that is such a significant thing to understand. I'm going to read that again. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good, 
And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Now it keeps talking that out of the good treasure of a man's heart, he'll bring forth good. But out of the bad treasure in a man's heart, he'll bring forth bad. What determines good treasure in the heart or bad treasure in the heart? It's that noise that you're allowing to enter and filter into your soul through your soul gates. That's why we teach about the importance of guarding your eye gate. That's why we teach on the importance of guarding your ear gate. And that's why we teach on the importance of guarding your mouth gate. You have control, you believer, you have control over what goes in to your soul. You have ability to control what goes into your heart. You can either store up good treasure or you can store up bad treasure. But the choice is up to you. You just have to choose to make a decision to start guarding what goes into your soul gates. That means you may have to, to guard your eye gate, you may have to start watching the kind of things you watch. In other words, you may have to be careful about the kind of TV, the kind of movies, the kind of videos, the kinds of social media, whatever it is that you're taking in with your eye, you need to be guarded over what you're taking in. When it comes to your ear gates, you need to be guarded over the types of things you're listening to, whether that's conversations with friends or people who you think are friends or family. If it's negative, you don't need it in your life. You got to be guarded over the types of things that you're listening to on TV. You got to be guarded over the types of music you're listening to when you're in the car or when you're at home or at work or wherever, any kind of music you're listening to. You've got to be guarded over that. And you've got to be guarded over the things that you're speaking because if you, a man will always speak out of the abundance of his heart. Out of the abundance of a heart, a man speaks. That's scriptural. Those are Jesus' words right there. You've got to become guarded over the stuff that's coming out of your mouth. I want to take you to another scripture. And this is out of 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 10. So 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 10. And I'm going to read it to you out of the New King James, and this is what it says. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. This right here is saying that I hath not seen nor ear heard the good things that God has planned for those who love Him. I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man. God is not saying that people don't know or understand what God has in store for them. What He is saying is that people who are not of the Spirit, people who are not of Him will not understand this. You know, you have to understand if we were speaking about the three types of being a person can be, the three types of man, so to speak. You have the natural man, you have the carnal man, and you have the spiritual man. The natural man is someone who has never discovered Jesus as his Lord and Savior. His name is not written in the, name, in the Lamb's Book of Life, and he's not saved. He's a natural man. You then have a carnal man. A carnal man is someone who has received his salvation, but is still living and acting like the world. And then you have a spiritual man. And a spiritual man is someone who has received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They've become saved according to Romans 10, 9 and 10 that says that when you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you're saved. This is a person who has experienced their salvation and is living their life for Christ. It doesn't mean they have to live perfect. It doesn't mean that they won't make any mistakes. But what it means is they're living their life for Christ. When someone is natural, 
or someone is carnal. You know, God tells us in His Word that God will not be mocked, that whatever a man sows, he'll also reap. It tells us that. And God will not be mocked. That which a man sows, he will also reap. So when God tells us that, He's saying that if you sow to the flesh because you're a natural man, or if you sow to the flesh because you're a carnal man, then you're not going to understand the deeper things of God because you're not sowing to your spirit, you're sowing to your flesh. That's what this scripture means right here. I'm going to read it one more time. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. I'm telling you that as a believer, we have to come to a position where we learn to guard our heart. And the way we learn to guard our heart is by learning to guard our soul, which is your eye gate, it's your ear gate, and your mouth gate. And when you learn to guard those three soul gates, you'll begin to eliminate and filter the noise that's constantly trying to penetrate your soul, that's trying to constantly penetrate your heart and gain purchase and access to it, and you'll be able to weed it out and hear the voice of God better. Thank you for taking the time to stop by and grow with us today. If you would like more information or would like to support or partner with Neil Reyes Ministries, please visit our website at neilreyes.com or you can mail us at Neil Reyes Ministries, P.O. Box 586, Fort Worth, Texas 76052. Today's episode of Champions Walk was brought to you by the faithful partners and supporters of Neil Reyes Ministries who are joining us in our assignment of waking up the church, setting the captives free, and together we're reaching the lost.